put my foot down and, well, I've got fresh cow patty all over my shoes now. Beautiful. I wanted to come on this trip to see where the other half of my family came from, to see where it all began. Much had changed in the old country, except the mountains. They were still there, welcoming, seeming to say, look at me, I've been waiting for you, and I always will. My Nono is taking me, his 16-year-old grandson from Canada, as he did with my father at the same age before me, to discover my roots and the beauty of the mountains. Our route is the Dolmite Trail of the Vete Feltrine. We depart from Val Nuana in Primero, from there, we proceed to Refugio Bots. We will stay overnight, and in the morning, we will depart to reach Refugio del Piaz. Zio Paolo will lead the way. Joining us on this excursion is Zio Bruno and our friends Romeo and Pina, with her daughter Agnes. However, Pina and Agnes will only be with us to Refugio Bots. Pronti per partire per una lunga traversata fra queste montagne selvagge che sovrastano feltre. Sarà una bella fatica, ma sarà anche una grande soddisfazione. I am excited to know I am walking in the footsteps of my dad, who hiked this route 33 years ago. I'm thrilled by the idea that I get to see this landscape through the same lens he saw it that long ago. up this morning feeling pretty sick 
but I mean, I could have said the word and I would have been at home getting everyone's help and care, but decided to push through. So we're here at the Dolomites and I feel much better than I did this morning. Feeling better every second and I just can't wait to get to the top. So we're back here out on the Dolomites and naturally I was looking at a sign, you know, seeing how far everything was from us and of course put my foot down and well, I've got fresh cow patty all over my shoes now. Beautiful. Poi qua scendiamo e poi risaliamo sotto il ramezza e arriviamo a 2200 metri. Poi fondamentalmente lungo la piazza del Diaol e il, mm. il Pietena siamo abbastanza in quota. Questa è la busa delle vette e poi arriviamo al rifugio del Piazza. For Pina and her daughter Agnes, this is as far as they can come. After feeling sick, then better, and now sick again, I worry that I will put the remainder of the trip in jeopardy. La conca di Neva è un po' un'anomalia da un punto di vista del, dei confini geopolitici di questi luoghi, in quanto ci troviamo proprio in territorio eh, del comune di Cesio Maggiore, per cui in provincia di Belluno, però da un punto di vista idrografico eh, siamo nel bacino appunto idrografico della Valle del Primiero, l'acqua che scende e che arriva a valle qui si mette nel Cismon e non nel Piave, per cui di fatto siamo effettivamente in, nel Trentino. E la storia di questo, di questo luogo è una storia, come dicevo, molto particolare perché ricorda un passato antico di confini, di dispute confinarie 
di, ehm, di chi in qualche modo ancora dall'età medievale aveva dei diritti su queste, su queste terre e anche quando con l'avvento degli stati questi confini, queste proprietà vennero mantenute eh, nel tempo. Domani quando partirete e andrete verso eh, la traversata delle vette verso il rifugio dal piazza, il primo punto significativo da non mancare una sosta è il passo finestra. Il passo finestra è un po' il luogo simbolo di questa zona perché permette il collegamento fra il, ehm, fra i versanti eh, sud e l'accesso alla Val Canzoi con il primiero a nord ed è appunto su quella linea di confine che si svolgeva i transiti eh, di briganti, contrabbandieri e passaggio di soldati oltre che a chi aveva necessità di spostamento con il bestiame. Durante la prima guerra mondiale, precisamente negli anni 17 e 18, eh, venne costruita una linea di difesa a rafforzamento delle linee eh, che stavano più a nord del fronte dolomitico in previsione di un eventuale sfondamento che poteva esserci da nord verso sud. Per cui troverete tante testimonianze lasciate dal, dal genio militare che non solo costruì la, il, il, le stesse strade, i stessi sentieri, le stesse mulattiere che percorrerete, ma anche opere di difesa, quali grotte, postazioni per mitragliatrici e, e soprattutto eh, anche gradini nella roccia, percorrerete un tratto nella roccia scavato eh, da, appunto con dei gradini che facilita la salita e queste opere ancora oggi consentono di poter eh, fare dell'attività escursionistica in modo eh, molto bello e facilitato. Questa è la Val di Canzoi, laggiù in fondo si può vedere il Piave, Cesio Maggiore, di là Lentiai, Pianezze, le montagne, le montagne che separano Lentiai da Val di Obiadene. E lì sono su e sono su e là. È uno spettacolo con la fiore. Selvaggio. What brought you here? Uh, I watched a program about the Dolomites. Okay. Um, and I always wanted to come. And then I joined the Austrian Alpine Club and I met my friend. And she said, I'm planning this hike. Do you want to come? I said, yes, that's it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> What's your name? Lucy. Lucy. Nice to meet you, Lucy. And you. <laughs> and there was three of us, but we lost one yesterday because she... Uh, She slipped off the path uh -huh. and she, her legs she are done, finished, yeah. So she took the bus to meet us at the end. Uh -huh. Ho voluto chiamare questo, questo percorso la via del confine pacifico. La via del confine pacifico proprio perché gran parte del percorso si svolge lungo la linea del confine che per quasi 400 anni divise la Repubblica di Venezia a sud dal Tirolo eh, che sta a nord un anello che ehm, ha l'intenzione, l'idea di collegare eh, i rifugi del Cai di Feltre che si trovano lungo questa linea, appunto il rifugio Boz, il rifugio Dal Piazza e poi anche la possibilità di salire verso la cima del Monte 
eh, Pavione per poi scendere verso il rifugio Vederna e ritornare al punto eh, di partenza, magari appunto in Val Noana, per, se siamo partiti dalla Val Noana. Adesso dobbiamo arrivare sulla forcella del Sasso Scania, poi attraversiamo lo Scania fino ad arrivare la via dove si vede il sentiero, si nota la traccia di sentiero che corre lungo la montagna. Da lì poi andremo sulla messa e poi arriveremo sulla selvaggissima piazza del Diavolo. Uh, did you find it hard? Yeah, it's really? quite hard. Is it scary? Oh, uh, if you look down, it is very scary. <laughs> so yes. what, do, what do you do to compensate for that? Uh, balancing, focusing, that's it. You don't have the rackets, do you? No, nope. the sticks, nothing. Bare hand. Free, free, free hand. Free, <laughs> Right, right. Are you part of the group? No, I'm working or? with my husband. Oh, your husband? This is excellent. Have you been here before? Actually, we've done this route uh, five years ago, but with uh, bad conditions. The weather wasn't really good. Oh, so today you really enjoying ah, yes it. Yesterday and today is perfect. Fantastic. Ridiculously good. Ah. Yeah. And that's what we were looking for. Uh, yeah. Same route, better experience. Perfect. And where are you from? Netherlands. Ne Netherlands. Yes. Oh, I see. Full of mountains. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Andate sì, tutto piano. Tutto piano. Tutto piano sì. Sotto eh? il mare. Andate sì. sì. <laughs> Più che piano. All right. So, wh where are you going? Uh, the drive around to Piaz. The sì. Piaz. Okay, so I follow you. Excellent. If you get lost, we we'll go together. <laughs> How is that? Well, we've got lost. Today we got lost once. So well, we thought we did get lost, but we didn't. So, yeah. we are we on just, the right. Right path. Well, we just follow our nose and we smell the, the right fiume, on. fiume di Piaz. Perfect. It's a wonderful, enchanted time. As much as it's intimidating walking these mountains with sheer drops on all sides, walking the ridges that offer timeless panoramas and skies with gorgeous landscapes is well worth it. halfway to the Refugio del Piaz. Our pace was slow and we were dead tired, so. We had to cut it short because we ended up walking for about eight hours on the mountains and then we realized we have another eight hours to go and we weren't gonna get to the Refugio before nightfall. Last time we had five people, this time we only have two. A Little bit of a personnel change, you know, it's whatever. So now we're going to go up and so this is kind of our second try, if you will. This time, we start from the Paso of Crocedane, again uncertain of what lay ahead and how much time it will take. last time, but long way to go.
adesso da questo punto in avanti un'oretta di salita abbastanza ripida e poi se arrivate alla strada se continuate per i sentieri avete ancora un po di fatica se fate la strada è molto meno faticosa però è più lunga e il tempo oggi non sappiamo com'è So I, I grew up um, um, uh, and I, I went to the mountains a lot with my parents um, uh, yeah, when I was young. So I really love the mountains and um, we, we, we love Italy as well. <laughs> But we like the idea of a bit of um, cozy cities, co cozy small Italian cities, a swimming pool, the beach. But we like the variation. So, We do a bit hiking and a bit relaxing. Yes. Right? Yeah. And there is something important that you want to say. Yeah. Uh, is that so? Yeah. Tell uh, us. Shall I, shall I say it? Yeah, uh, say to, it. Uh, today I uh, asked my girlfriend to uh, uh, marry me. And wow. She, <laughs> what did you say? There i said yes. <laughs> I couldn't refuse. It's a very nice <laughs> ring. Yeah. Perfect. So, yeah, so yeah. it was a good spot. I uh, waited for the perfect spot and it was just uh, below the village. <laughs> Cheers to us conquering Monte Pavione. Perfect. Cheers. After a good sleep overnight at the Refugio del Piazza, Nono and I are well rested and eager to take on the climb to the top of the Monte Pavione, where we will have a 360 degree view of the picturesque valleys below. Climbing up the mountain this time feels a lot different. I'm not sick anymore, so I can fully appreciate the beauty of what's around me. Seeing these huge mountain peaks and stunning valleys makes me feel so small and insignificant, but it really is just incredible being here. Quando torno a trovare i miei la prima cosa che faccio è prendere le, gli scarponi e farmi un giro in montagna. Proprio bisogno. <ride>
we made it up Monte Pavione. It took us three and a half hours to get to the refugio yesterday. It's been almost three hours to get up here. It was a challenge. All uphill, then downhill, then uphill again. These mountains were here for my grandfather, my dad, me. They're gonna be here for my kids, my grandkids, whoever. Tried to get up the first time, didn't work. Tried to get up the second time, huge storm coming, that didn't work. Big, big, big moment was when we finally got to Refugio and we had our big glass of beer. Like, we need a big beer. They only had medium. So I was like, all right, guess we'll just get two mediums then. So we got a huge Cheers. glass of beer. We were just so hungry. Oh man. Yeah, that was probably it. Just getting up there and seeing, even in the morning when you woke up and the clouds were below your feet. It was ridiculous. It was just incredible. Being a time was always a big part of it, but now I think I actually appreciate and understand it fully because before I was just like, oh, I'm from Italy. We're from Italy. I don't know. You know, like, what's your favorite food from Italy? I don't know. You know, so now that I've been there, I've experienced the culture and like, I've lived the life, I can actually say I'm Italian and I know why and I know where I'm from. So yeah. I've already got plans to do it again. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. When? Two years right. from now. Two years from now. Or, yeah, two. Not this summer, but the next summer. Ah. Uh -huh. Yep. Very interesting. <laughs>